Hey guys, Youngblood with you for your Summarize the Verse, covering around the verse from July 20th in a shorter and more concise version. And starting off, the visual effects team has been working on improving existing conditions for 3.0, as well as checking vehicles and systems to basically ensure that their development hasn't broken anything, and polishing along the way as it's really been needed to make sure that it's performing as you would expect it to. New systems like the oxygen level have meant that there's reworks that have been necessary for locations like the high and low-tech airlocks. Uh, the team is still working on 3.0, but has shifted a little bit of focus onto Squadron 42 effects, as well as having the tech art team working on cinematics for uh, Squadron 42. Uh, they're also working on new implementations of usables, as well as the debugging weapon animation issues, as well as finishing passes to basically make them feel more realistic while you're using them. Um, and some of that's going to bleed into programming, where they're actually adding a new feature that re uh, removes the view of the weapon when you're aiming down sights, basically clearing up your line of sight and making shooting easier. Uh, they also worked on the technology to be able to add skins to weapons, which is built on the player customization system. Uh, overall, work from the programming side is really focusing on fixing outstanding issues that, that are blockers today, as well as just polishing off the existing code. Now, in the weapons world, uh, the last two FPS weapons built on old technology have been reworked, which were the Gemini pistol and the P4AR rifle, um, and have been polishing and optimizing all weapons in preparation for 3.0's release. Now, in ship weapons, we have the Claus and Warner laser repeaters that are basically finished in sizes 1 through 3, and they're moving on to sizes 4 through 6. And that improvement in the repeater from what it used to be in that simple, black, non-complex design to what it is today, the new version, it's a staggering improvement. Um, they've also finished up the sizes 1 through 3 for the Apocalypse, Apocalypse Arms scatter guns. Uh, in the AI world, the mission broker system and mission system in general are getting new features for 3.0, um, but those are also going to be getting some love for Squadron 42 too, uh, which includes basically giving you the ability to add um, or to have multiple people taking on the same mission and then being able to track that across different instances. So if there's only one item that's being tracked, it's going to be shared across those instances. That also means that they have to develop the ability to be able to abandon missions, as well as providing both lawful and unlawful symmetric missions, basically so it can pit good versus bad against each other in different sides of the same coin. Uh, in Character AI, they finished up the second sprint for the Buddy AI system, which is allowing the character to follow you, and you can specify if they're going to be doing this in front, beside, or behind you, as well as having the ability for them to take cover to cover you, and to kind of move through a room, uh, taking cover and moving between those spots as needed. Uh, in planets and level design teams, um, we see a lot of work really being done on Levski, which includes uh, adding new locations like the admin office and new stores, as well as checking uh, locations to ensure that you're not going to randomly suffocate because code errors that are present. Uh, Levski is also going to be a testing bed for the AI, so because they don't want it to feel unpopulated, they need to put a lot of people here. Um, but they don't want the AI to bunch up in a bunch of different areas based on bad logic. So they're going through and testing out that logic, as well as stress testing to determine how many they can actually have present here without causing crashes. Uh, in addition to Levski, we also get a look at how they're going to be placing roads on planets using this new system that allows for speed and placement, as well as keeping the resources low with fast and efficient draw commands. Past that, they're starting to look at Lorville, which is the next landing location, as well as being an active development on the planet Hurston, uh, which I think this was our first look at, which happens to include a lot of cool planetary vegetation. Uh, Tech has been working on various gravity conditions on the new moons, including showing some low gravity and the impact it has to the player that kind of floats around after a jump, um, and it makes me think it's going to be a lot of fun to drive over with some of the new ground vehicles that we're getting. And finally, for the studio update, we uh, saw a look at the cinematics team and what they've been doing for Squadron 42, as well as the graphic engineers really developing new 2D and holographic screens based on the technology that we've talked about in the last few weeks, and it's looking pretty damn impressive right now. Now, in the behind the scenes this week, it was really focused on kiosks and commodities, and we see that kiosks are going to be um, really an important development as it's where players are going to conduct buying and selling of goods in the game, especially important for items that are like not present in display cases in front of you. Um, basically, you just get a full list of the store's inventory and the ability to filter and sort that as you like. Um, now, this is just a start, though, as that's eventually going to end up being the way that you handle things like landing services with repair, rearm, and refuel. Uh, after you make the purchase, you can end up determining your delivery option, like being equipped directly onto your ship or placing it into your cargo hold. Um, and that also gets more complicated when you consider multiple ships that you own. So you have to select the appropriate ship that you want to have it delivered to and then place it where you want it within the cargo hold. 
Uh, visually, kiosks are going to be branded in different ways depending on where they are, as well as making them match the environment. For example, Grimhex is going to have lower tech kiosks than you would see at something like Port Alizar, and it needs to reflect that by looking at it and listening to it. Uh, in regards to commodities, these are going to be the items that are going to be the backbone for the economy system, items like iron, gold, and hydrogen. Um, they all make up the foundation for bigger and more complex goods to be traded later, as well as setting a baseline economy with supply and demand. Um, that supply and demand is also going to be impacted in real time based on player interactions in the verse, as well as things like other events, like say a supply chain is cut off or a factory stops producing. Um, then you may end up seeing the price go up on the impacted items based on the lower supply. So that level of complexity is coming. So there you have it. That's your uh, summarize the verse this week. If you guys have questions, let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for more and have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.